fantastic stuff. So today's a bit of a different session. It's going to be a very relaxed chat. We're going to take some time to just get to know everyone again. And uh, Vida is going to leave us a little bit sooner because we have graciously stolen her on her holiday and she has more game driving to do. So <laughs> as always, these sessions are recorded and they will be released on our channel afterwards. So if you can't join right now or you can't stay the whole time, hit us up afterwards. Okay, so as a starting point, today is gonna to be all around the Venus side of software development. And what I mean by that is that we actually have a lot of really talented ladies in tech in Daryl, and we'd never hear from how awesome they are or how awesome their experiences are. So I've put together a few questions. If you guys have specific questions for them, you're also welcome to add them in. But we've prepared a couple of questions and we're going to target and see what their views are and what their experience is around this. So as a starting point, I'd love for you guys to just take a moment and Firstly, divert everyone back so that they can join us on Zoom. And yeah, add a couple of questions that you've got. So Kia, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are currently one of our super deeps and moving into the junior space. You're joining the APSA team very soon. Um, Lindy is an incredible BA. Also, side note, probably one of the most competent not recruiter recruiters that I've ever worked with. <laughs> Vida is an incredible senior developer with us and knows how to wrangle a project like you cannot believe. She will whip it into shape in no time. <laughs> and Angela is a shining star when it comes to all things blogging. She is an incredible software developer in the Standard Bank side, and she's really, really one of the most fun people to chat to. So if you need her outside of work, also a reminder to get you coffee. She's really good at that. So. As a starting point, I think we're going to hit it off with Vida. I'd love to know, in your experience, what has been a specific experience in a project or in the industry where you wish that people had done something differently? And what do you think you wish they would have done differently? Sure, thanks, Ani. Um, look, I, I think it's not really something specifically that I that I hated uh, that they did. It was just the culture of being the only female in the team. Look, I've been in this industry for quite some time. So like I've been on teams where I was literally one of two females in the office, never mind in a team. And, um, you know, just, <laughs> I think that in itself has changed a lot, is changing a lot already. I've had the opportunity to work in teams where we are mostly female. So, you know, I, I think in terms of that, in terms of, of having to deal with, you know, being one of the boys, <laughs> as soon as you step into the office, you know, you kind of like leave your female persona behind and not having to do that anymore is, is um, it is completely and utterly, it's, it's like a weight lifted off your shoulders to not have to do that context switch, to not do that code switching. Um, so I think I'm very grateful for that. And um, I mean, just seeing how many more females are joining every day. It's, it's, a, it's an exciting thing to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah no, definitely that, that whole thing of, of um, but like I said, it's not something spe somewhat specifically that it's just a culture thing that's, uh, that's changing slowly but surely, yeah. And how do you manage that culture change? You know, when you used to work in an environment that was very like guy focused, you know, how did you manage that culture? Did you remind them that, you know, hey, I'm a girl here or did you manage? Yeah, no, you manage, you, you teach yourself to laugh at all the jokes. <laughs> no, I'm just, some of them are funny, some of them are funny. But also the thing is, is um, I, I, look, you manage. I, I mean, if you <laughs> if you like what you're doing, you manage. There we go. I th and I think um, I also think it takes a special kind of woman to actually stick it out, because it can be discouraging being the only person in in a team uh, that <laughs> you know your experiences are unique. Um, so I, you know, and again, not having to be 
alone makes a world of difference. And I think that yeah. will, so, I mean, in my, in my classes at Varsity, when we started out in first year, there were so many more, or there were a lot more females starting out. And then by third year, it's almost like it's just <laughs> the guys that are left, you know. And I think just that is also changing. Um, yeah, and I, I guess it, you don't have to learn that code switching anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. so no, it's, it's, it's something that you learn. It's not a bad mm -hmm. thing to learn. It, it comes yeah. in helpful, but it's nice not to have to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's kind of like a weight lifts off your shoulders because you can just be yourself and you realize that what matters at the end of the day is your work and not really whether you're a guy or a girl and you don't have to be one of the boys. You can just be the awesome person that you are. So perhaps as a follow up to that, can you remember a time when, you know, something really worked out on a project? And I think you've sort of touched on this a little bit in the sense that, you know, things are changing, but can you maybe think of a project experience that you've had where you were just like, yeah, this works? Yeah, no, the thing is, I think, <laughs> look, it's, it's not a specifically, I mean, it's a, it's a human experience that as soon as you've proven to, to the rest of the team that you can actually do your job, you know, it's, it's, it's like, okay, here we go. We're gonna get this done. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get this stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <out now. laughs> it's all good we're very proud of you regardless and yes. I think it's, <laughs> it was case, part of yeah. the dream <laughs> so i think you know as soon as 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 people realize that that it's it's not just you know you not just the the documentation person but that you actually can do your job and you can do it very well you know it's it's it might not be a, a, a hurdle everyone has to cross, but as soon as you cross it, things are just, it's plain sailing from there on out. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. And thank you for joining us while you are on holiday and while yes. game driving. What's been your favorite animal spotting so far? <laughs> Look, I think I've told the whole world already, but last night we saw a leopard like right next to the vehicle like so close, they told us to sit still. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. no, so it was amazing. I, I, we were so fortunate, yeah. No, but today it's it's also lots of elephant, buffalo, roibok, lots of them, but it's been amazing. So thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks so much, Vida. I think what I'd love to do is I'd love to move through and have a chat with Linz and guys you're welcome to also jump in at any stage and add in some questions in the chat we'll also field those but I'd love to know Linz you've had quite an interesting introduction into the tech space so from what I know you started as a developer you moved in to become a BA you know what do you think made your decision to go you know let me rather be a BA than a developer yeah, it has been a very interesting start to, to a very long career that I've just, I'm doing right now. It was completely by luck. Um, I used to consult, I think it was 99, if I'm not mistaken, um, with this consulting firm in Pretoria, Department of Land Affairs. And I was a crappy, very crappy developer. <laughs> um, so my manager at the time said, have you heard of this concept called a BA business analyst? Like, what is that? Um, and he taught me and yeah, I was traveling the whole country. So it was a blast for me. Instead of sitting and looking at a, at a computer the whole day, as you know, I like to talk. So it was the perfect match for me. Um, yeah, so that's how mm -hmm. I got introduced to my career. <laughs> I mean, what has been the best travel spot for you? So obviously COVID's changed that a bit, but pre-COVID, best travel. Um, I actually enjoy going to my, or re, where my dad originates, which is Mozambique. Uh, it's, I was thinking about it this morning. Um, I haven't seen my family in a long time. So as soon as things can actually work out, I am straight in a car and heading towards that direction. <laughs> That's amazing. So... Yeah. In the BA space, what has been your sort of challenge that you've overcome as a woman in the BA environment? 
I think it's not necessarily a BA, being a BA. I think, um, and I'm, I'm actually going through that process right now. Um, so being always thought of as an outsider, being a consultant, um, you're an outsider and it's very difficult for people to welcome you. They don't understand that you are there to actually help. But my favorite line that I've used, I've, I've used and it's working very well is, carry on wasting your time. I'm going to carry on billing. So carry on pushing me out. I'll carry on billing. But yeah, um, it's, 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 it's actually starting to, trying to be part of the team. Um, it's one of the biggest challenges. Um, you know how we work at Daryl, the integration and how we all work together as a team. Um, when you go into a brand new team outside in, 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 in these in our clients, um, it's it's very difficult to integrate yourself with them. But it's a challenge that I actually enjoy. Um, um, I'm fortunate right now that those relationships are starting to form and I'm seeing great benefits to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do you build those relationships? Well, fortunately, again, the brand is behind us. Um, Daryl is known to be doing good work. So when you get into the, and then you just present that I'm here to do this work and this is, you know, being professional and presenting, putting your best foot forward. It, it, it helps for people to accept you like, okay, now we can see the benefit of you being here. Mm-hmm. Um, and just going back to the whole gender, gender thing, um, I, I find a whole lot of women right now are in those spaces. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely changing. Um, it's not as quickly as we want it to change, but it's definitely changing. Um, mm-hmm. And there's dynamics that you, 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 you get. Obviously, people are different. It doesn't matter whether it's a woman or a man. People are different, but it, it's easier for me to form those relationships with the women management that I'm working with um, because it's, you're not a threat. You're not, or you looked down upon. Um, it's easier to be accepted, but it's, it's one of those things we have to work through. Um, as I said, the brand helps being behind such a, a brand like Daryl being, you know, working for mm-hmm. a company. It's mm-hmm. The credibility is there. We are known to do that. Yeah. got a question from Peter. He'd love to know how can men be better colleagues? Um, well, how can men be better colleagues? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good That's question. That's a very interesting one. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, you know, there's a way that there's weird jokes, weird jokes that men say when they are on their own and they bring those to our spaces and you have this look like, did you just say it? And when you react in a certain way, they start pointing fingers saying you're too sensitive. Like, don't do that. This is not your, your, your mates that you're talking, of, you're talking to right now. So be sensitive. I think being sensitive to these things that you do with your boys, but these things that you need to do in it when there's a, a, you know, a mixed group of people, and just be sensitive. Yeah, I think that's such a good answer. It's that just read the room and it's okay, you know? <laughs> read the, see, read the room, Peter. Read the room. <laughs> okay, and... I'd love to know, what do you think we can do to advance the tech industry and specifically get people involved and get more ladies and more diversity involved? Um, I thought about that question actually last night. And um, one of the the biggest things is for me is let's stop the tokenism. We know for a fact that there is a huge, huge, huge shortage of women, especially in management. It doesn't matter whether it's tech or in any, any company. But what I find is this tokenism, they will employ a woman who will sit there. And in this, when I start being a woman and, and, and leading the way a woman would lead, then you're sidelined. Um, and I, I find it gets very frustrating in such a way that you decide that this is not worth it. So we take two steps forward and 20 steps backwards. Um, I think it ties in with what Peter was saying is, to me is understand that when you're bringing somebody like that, who's never been part of the team, you are all boys club, know that there's a difference that's going to be, that's going to be brought by that person. 
and take cognizance that things are not going to be the same, but try to understand as to what is bringing that difference in thinking, that difference in, in you know, different things that are happening. Put that in your mind and try to accommodate it. Because um, tokenism to me is frustrating. Don't just do things as a tick box exercise. Just do it and be fully into it. And that's how we're going to see yeah. progress in our, in, in our industry. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I really think it's that understanding and that appreciation that we all come from different backgrounds. We all have Absolutely. different points of reference and different ways of doing things. And that is not a bad thing. That is no, such a fantastic piece of advice. Thanks so much, Linz. All yeah. right. So let's hear from Kia, because I see Kia's on the list today. Ali would like to know, <laughs> what was your experience you know, coming into the tech space through our grad program, um, was it different for you though? How can we attract more women and, you know, what's, what would work? Yeah, well, if um, honestly speaking, I feel like I'm kind of privileged in my answer and I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but I haven't felt like I didn't belong in a space. Uh, I grew up with a lot of guys, so I was always around guys. So being in the tech industry didn't feel like I had to do something particular or I had to act in a particular way because I was always around guys. I was always used to that energy. So I think to me, it, it didn't make quite a big difference whether I was working with guys, I think maybe girls, because you're not really sure where we stand. It's quite comforting being in a room with women because of the energy but it's also like are we going to compete is this going to be a thing so women was a different I think journey compared to men but I haven't felt outcast in any way by either gender yeah, yeah. that's I think that's awesome. And do you think it's that inclusion of, you know, being part of the team and not being singled out that helps you attract more people that or more ladies into this sort of stuff? I think Ariel definitely has that advantage just from the culture perspective on its own. You know, you guys don't emphasize that you have to be a woman, you have to be man, you have to be white, you have to be black. So it's just you've created a comfort level that I think will just naturally attract good people. So I think Daryl's is doing a very good job at it. <laughs> That's very sweet. I really appreciate that. I don't know, Angela, do you have anything you want to add to that? What do you think we could do to make a graduate program or any sort of program more attractive to women? That's a tricky one. Um, so I think for me, when, um, when I went to the grad, um, thingy at Wits. Um, I think something that really put me off, um, because I didn't initially apply to Daryl, I, I like I got in through a friend. And I remember going to the store and um I can't even remember who was there, but I went there and I was just like, hi, what do you guys do? Bloody blah blah blah. And um they were like, no, we're at Daryl, we hire the best of the best. Like instantly for me was a shutdown I was just like I'm not the best of the best so let's just leave it there <laughs> you know what I mean like this is not for me so I think the best of the best sort of um marketing if I can say doesn't work for everyone like that already that sort of implies that I have to believe that I'm the best of the best and I think that sort of filters out a lot of the women really um especially from <laughs> especially from um like a university level I think a lot of us at university level are definitely still um insecure about our knowledge um so I definitely think that might help um with that I guess yeah, yeah. Vida did you want to add something I see a hand, that's why I'm asking. Yes, so I'm sorry, no, sorry. I wanted to put it for up later. Let me just also maybe switch on my camera here. <laughs> um, yes. No, I just wanted to, to touch on, sorry, I'm, I'm dropping off just now, but I just quickly wanted to touch on something that Kia said about being in the same room with women and wondering now if you have to compete. And I'm not saying 
that competition is a bad thing. But imagine walking into a space where a guy walks in and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to compete with another guy for a spot on this technical team with a bunch of women. And I think once we get to that spot, <laughs> which whenever that is, then we'll be able to say tech is an equal playing field. And that, yeah, there was just something that jumped out of me that I wanted to sure. point out that, you know, the, that unfair competition, there's only one space at the table. And, um, you know, and I think Daryl is making a huge difference in giving us more space at the table, that said as well. And that's my last comment. No, I love that. I think that's such a powerful point to add. And imposter syndrome is real, Angela. I think Ali is right in the sense that when you look at job applicants throughout the industry, women will more likely go into a job spec and want to tick off every single thing on that job spec before we even take the step to apply. And I think it is important to remind people that you are very seldom going to meet every single requirement for whatever challenge you take on. But is it something that you can learn? Is it something that you can take on? And that is such a cultural shift. It's a hard thing to do. But the messaging needs to be that, you know, we're here to help you grow. And I think there's a lot of value into that as well. And having a seat at the table is a big thing, but everybody needs to know that they have a chance to take that seat at the table, right? So I think I'd love to know from your side, Kia, what is a question on the topic of women in tech that you're just absolutely sick and tired of hearing. You never want to hear it again. So we're going to answer it once and forever and put it to bed. <laughs> uh, well, I think again, my, my answer would also still be kind of privileged. I don't think anyone has ever come up to me and be asking me a question specifically because I'm a woman in tech. But I feel like a lot of the question that does come up is how does it feel to be a woman in tech? And again, I say it makes no difference to me because I don't feel the difference at all. I just look at the work and just that's where the focus should be. And that's where my focus is, that the work is the challenge. It shouldn't be the people necessarily. Yeah, you're just going in, you're going to get the thing done. And that's the important part. <laughs> yes. So let's imagine that you can travel back in time and you can coach young Kia on her future. What would you coach young Kia on? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, I think young Kia should know, and it's very important that CAT and IT are not necessarily the same thing. So when you start off your degree, girl, you're going to get shook. You're going to get shocked by the difference <laughs> that the two are. But just if it is the career you want to stick out and move forward with, you should go for it. We should definitely do it. There's a lot of lessons to be learned and it's going to be painful. Some journeys are going to be very painful to go through but you're definitely going to be happy for the person you turn out to be after them. So I definitely think you should do it. IT is a good space to, to learn from. Yeah, I can imagine that's quite a surprise because cat was something that uh, it's a different beast altogether. Oh, what, was the, <laughs> what was the subject that shook you the most? Oh, oof. Well, I'm not much of a student. I think that's one of my disadvantages. But I think accounting, accounting in, in the high school was not the greatest. I don't know if that's how far back you wanted to go, but accounting and math was not my favorites. Not my favorites <laughs> at all. It's okay. Young Kia made it and we love you and you're here and doing amazing things. Thank you Thank so much. Thank goodness to Young Kia. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have a question that's come through from Ross, 
And it basically says coming from studying engineering, where there were very few ladies, and then into this workspace, most, if not all of the guys that I've interacted with seem quite keen to have more ladies in the space, but maybe this isn't reflective of the world, but at least his experience. Do you feel that exclusion or gatekeeping rather comes from others in the industry? So colleagues or is it a perceived image of what the industry should be from the outside world? So I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Maybe Angela, do you want to take this one? So I'm still trying to understand the question. What is... So I think it's looking more around, you know, is it that you know, we are limiting ourselves? Or is it that the guys, the boys club is too intimidating? And Russ, you can correct me if I've misunderstood. Um, I think it starts, I think the, the failure for women in tech starts like long before you even get into the work environment. By the time you get to working, there's already just like such a small pool of women already um and then that's already in itself and then they're going to deal with whatever it is that they deal with um so yeah i think it doesn't it also doesn't help that um you're feeling very isolated um and it's very boys clubby and you don't really feel fully comfortable like yes you get along with men but sometimes you know you just need feminine energy really around you um so yeah I don't know if that answers the question yeah I think a lot of the time what happens is that we just need to remember to present a very inclusive space Vida so I think sometimes also no not I think I know sometimes also it is very unconscious and it's 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 <laughs> You know, like when you see something and then you can't unsee it. I think men have to go out of their way to see stuff. So for instance, and I am not a gamer, so if the words I'm using makes no sense. Please know I'm trying. But for instance, if people start talking uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, it's, it's chances are that the female in your team does not know what you're talking about. Now, that little conversation is happening around the water, water cooler that turns into a conversation around work, whether your teammate is now completely excluded because they don't share the interest in Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm not saying don't have an interest, but be conscious of the fact that not everyone is like you right now anymore. There is a bigger, bigger world out there and you have to step out of your comfort zone as well to meet your teammates halfway. And that's not just for females, that is for everyone in your team. I mean, it's just for females specifically, stay sharp. Mm, I agree. Enjoy <laughs> the rest of the talk and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye, Vida, thanks so much. Thank that was awesome. Bye -bye. <laughs> yeah. It's such an interesting point as well that relationship building component you know when you arrive in a new environment it's so important to understand you know who am I going to be dealing with and you know it's why those initial meetings really add a hell of a lot of value because you're actually figuring out how do you meet this person halfway so Angela I'd love to know what changes do you think we need to make in the tech space uh, I think first I just wanted to add on to what Vito was saying, um, and now I have forgotten my point. <laughs> sorry, it's me. Okay, so, it's fine. No, come don't worry. back. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think um, number one, I think definitely there's in tech there's this huge discouragement for a work life balance. There's this insane idea of you need to, in order to be um, understood or accepted or being the best developer, you have to do, you have to, like developing has to be your job and your hobby. Um, it's, it's weird. It's like, are you tired from eight hours of coding? Why don't you de-stress by coding some more, do you know, after that? I'm just like, this just does not make any sense to me. And I feel like that's sort of really just um, 
it really gives a lot of anxiety because now you feel like you're not doing all of these things that other people are doing, but they're not really doing. I think when people say I have a side project, they really just did like a NG new project. Do you know what I mean? Like it's really not that deep. Um, but there's this thing where everyone's pretending to be, or maybe they are, I don't know, but there's this expectation of you to enjoy working long hours, to enjoy um, really putting in a lot of extra effort. Um, because this is the developer way and it really isn't I think that needs to change because it also it also sort of goes into um when you go work at a client that's sort of the impression that they have of the tech industry is that oh you're developers you enjoy working till 12 anyway I'm like no I don't do you know what I mean like I want to go watch RuPaul's Drag Race I don't want to work till midnight um but yeah I think that's definitely one um and I think another thing um, with, in terms of like bringing women into the industry, I think tech in general is very, um, it's very integrated or meshed in with nerd culture. So it really feels like if I'm trying to pursue tech, I'm in essence pursuing nerd culture. Like it, I think that's also something that would put um, young girls off. It would be like, I'm not interested in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not interested in insert nerd things. Yeah. Um, but if you're not interested in those things, you automatically sort of associate it with not being interested in, in the tech space. So I definitely think we can try and really broaden the PR, if I can say, of tech. Um, to really include, like, I mean, with for young girls, it can be makeup, it can be whatever, um, it can be music, it can be whatever. Um, and I think sometimes um, a lot of people try and do like humanitarian projects um, where it's like, oh, fix your village water problems or fix your time, your school timetable with code. I don't want to do that. Do you know what I mean? It, it should be something that people are genuinely interested in um, that can really bring them. If we want it to be like a, a happy place for them, you don't want to mix your problems with your with your escape, I guess. Yeah. It's a I, very long answer, but yeah. No, I agree. And I think it's that it's exactly what Gilad is saying. It's the work-life rhythm. It's what Lucy and Alison spoke about as well, is we cannot create a culture of non-stop focus and non-stop work. And you really should have the option to say, you know what, I'll put in the time when I need to put in the time. But I'm going to go and have dinner now. I'm going to watch terrible reality TV and that's perfectly fine. And it's part of why I think the rhetoric around when you are recruiting in the tech space also needs to shift. You can't be asking for someone who is expressly into a nerd culture. You need to broaden it so that it is inclusive. You have to be mindful of the fact that the person that's gonna do the job is not necessarily always that stereotypical figure. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when you're speaking to someone in the industry and they're like, oh, you know how developers are. I'm like, yes, they're people. That's how they are. That is the express point of what this is supposed to be. And I agree completely. We need to look at how we actually word things so that it's welcoming to everyone. Because what we actually do at the end of the day is we use technology to solve problems. And that's case in point, the message that needs to go out is how do we do that? So I see Lindy has her hand up. Thanks, Anine. Um, it's more question to, 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 to Kia and, and, and Angela. And I'm, I'm hoping we can get an answer from our current grads, um, especially the ladies. What I always, I think I've spoken to Alison about it a couple of months ago, is obviously when I went to high school, not revealing my age, donkey years ago, um, there was absolutely, I promise you, when I, 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 I came to, to varsity, it was the first time I actually sat in front of a computer. And as to how, what brought me to do the, the, the qualification that I did, only God knows. So back then there was no, especially in, 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 the, in, the, in the 
township schools and all of that, there was no prevalence or any talk of this tech world that has actually emerged right now. But I know that has changed. My question to the ladies is, do you think talks like this, if we can start pushing like this, there is this kind of talk and then pushing it to schools so these girls can start seeing that there is actually real people that work in these industries. It's not, as Angela said, a bunch of nerds that are actually doing this. It's actually real people that are actually behind this work. Do the ladies think that can have an impact? Um, can it change perception? Can it start warming up those, those, those little ladies saying, this is something to pursue? I, it's just a question. All right. Uh, I think it might help. Um, but I think at that age, you're just trying to figure out what career you want to do. Do you know what I mean? You're not, well, for me, I wasn't thinking, what am I going to deal with when I get into that career? And I think um, this talk is sort of centered around um, now that you're in the career, what are you struggling with? I think at a younger age, it's it should be more of making this industry interesting to more than just Dungeons and Dragon lovers. I think Vida has now dubbed <laughs> take <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. But I think how do we market it to how do we make this interesting to people who are interested in different things? Because right now I feel like it's definitely geared towards just the the one subset. And I think that's why we'll we'll constantly keep getting that subset is because we're not advertising to anyone else. We're literally just saying hello, Dungeons and Dragons, come forth, come code, um, come do games. And there's so much you can do with tech. It's insane that it really is just so narrow. Um, you really could just advertise it for anything. You can um, use APIs to get um, your favorite, um, I don't know, your favorite Fenty um, foundation or your favorite whatever. Do you know, like it really can be towards things that, girls are interested in whether it be music whether it's reality tv you can you can generate like a, a real housewives of atlanta um sayings thing there's just so much you can do but it's not being done it's really just um code snake uh codes whatever do you know what i mean it's just mm. things that are not yeah. for Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, if I'm understanding you correctly, it's really just about targeting the message right. So there is a lot of value in sharing this stuff. It just needs to be targeted. What do you think, Kia? Okay, well, for, for me, I think definitely if, well, like Lindy says, when I was in school, I had cats and not IT. So when I did Rosity, to, to just have that difference was quite a big jump. So I think nowadays high schools do have IT and people do get to experience it. I think if, I don't like to use America as an example, but America do have this um, kind of like a year thing where you get to experience different courses. So maybe if we had something like that, just to give people just an introduction in what it is that you're looking at so they can understand better I think that'll be a great thing. And I think, like Angela says, to manage expectation, because I feel as a junior now, working eight hours, I have to be good at this. And then off the work, I have to do this to make sure I'm better next day. So if we can manage that expectation, I think that'll also be a good thing for just people in general. Yeah, absolutely. I think one question that's come through Alison that I think is really cool is what is the biggest jaw dropping moment that you've had in the workplace? So I see Lindy smiling. So there must be something there. <laughs> uh, Lindy. It's, it's a typical question from Alison. There has been so many jaw dropping moments. <laughs> um, I'm laughing just at the... Mm -hmm enormous kind of examples that I have, but <laughs> no, I'm not going to answer that. No, no. Declined to answer. No, I'm okay, not. So, <laughs> Kia, how about you? 
I think every moment working on a new project is a jaw-dropping moment because <laughs> there's so many things you have to kind of feel like you have to catch up on and you're not sure how much exactly do you need me to be a pro at at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like every time I'm on a new project, just just trying to catch up. Mm, yeah, I think so. And it, geez, I can only imagine you guys go into these environments, and it's so complex. Like I take my hat off because you're doing stuff that I don't even know where I'd start with. I think it happens quite often that we are we ask this question to our interviewees, and I thought it might be fun to see what you guys think. So. I'd love to know, and this is also an Alison favorite. So imagine that you could have dinner with anyone, alive, dead, fictional, real, anyone at all. Who would you have dinner with? And why would you have dinner with them? So Kia, who would you want to meet? Well, for me, then I think I've already, well, it's not I think I have already met them. Uh, it's, I would have dinner with my gran, my mom, my sister, and my aunts. There's no way I cannot not have a good time whenever I'm around them. It's just always positive energy. It's always mm. loving. It's always support. I think when you go through hard times, there's no better energy to be around than with those women. That's awesome. I love that. How about you, Angela? Who would you want to meet? Um, I really wish I went first and <laughs> not off the key because there's such a good one. <laughs> but literally the first person that's coming to my mind right now, purely because I'm binge watching, um, uh, is RuPaul, because I'm watching RuPaul's Drag Race like back to back right now. Um, so I'm super obsessed with the show right now. Um it's just I think opening it really, it's just giving such a beautiful insight into the LGBT community and just like drag in general and everything's just so beautiful and fierce. And yeah, I just, I just love the mm. show. Yeah. So yeah. Like, that's such a cultural icon as well. Just honestly, great. Like, <laughs> it's, it's insane what they can do. Madness. <laughs> love it. I love it. Then how about you? Who would you want to have dinner with? <laughs> Um, it's <clears throat> a bit cliche. <laughs> I've been missing my dad a lot. Um, he passed away in 2016. So if I could just have one moment and have dinner with him, that is one. Um, we were not too close when I was growing up. But, um, you know, looking back, you start appreciating that he was not a bad dude at all, man. You <laughs> can just come back and just give me one, one more chance just to have dinner with him. That would be amazing. And the second person is, I can't remember her name. I can't even remember what the show is called. But there's an amazing show on Netflix. Um, it's, a, it's actually a reality show. This woman um, decided to leave um, her very religious background and start from scratch. Um, and she, at 40, she started this shoe line. Um, she's a, a super CEO of this amazing um, modeling kind of thing. Like she just blew my mind. Like, how can you start with nothing at the back and be such an icon at the end? If I can have any moment to sit with that woman and find out exactly how does your brain work? Where did you get the courage to do that? She's amazing. But I'll find her name in the same group. That's awesome. And I think it's such a nice combination of the two of them. And um, yeah. it says a lot about the person when we do ask this question, because it shows, you know, how important certain things are to you. And I think there's a general consensus that our families and the people we aspire to shape the way that we approach things. Yeah. So I have one last question before we take it to the audience. And it's more towards Kia, but everyone else is welcome to join in. But I really would love to know what is the most important skill that you have learned as someone consulting in the tech space? So in the last time of your career, what's been sort of the dang, this is the, the thing I should know? Um, communication and understanding. <laughs> I realized that actually I should really understand what it is that the client needs from me wants from me and I should be very clear in communicating when I do not understand so I think those were the biggest 
things that I'm, I'm still learning, but I'm glad that I am. I love that. That's such a good one. And what do you think? What would be yours? Um, I think uh, estimations are a lot more important um, than you think they are, I guess. Well, in the sense that I, like for me, I used to, like, I think at the beginning of my career, I thought, I'm like, why are we estimating you'll get it when you get it? Um, but I think it's more than just you, it's more than just development. There's such a bit, there's so much more that happens after um, you sort of put your code into, um, not even production, like after you put your code into like test where it's sort of out of your hands now. Um, so they sort of need it. Um, I think it's, yeah. It, it's it's bigger than just development so they also need their timeline so it's yeah they're not being iffy they just need it for for their sanity for for them to do their work effectively they need you to sort of tell them so I think I completely used to underestimate estimations um and now I I sort of have a respect for them so yeah yeah Oh, I love that. Yeah, sort of realizing that you're in a bigger ecosystem. It's not just your code and it fits into something else. Lindy, what do you think? What is your aha moment? <laughs> um, it's, I think I've mentioned it before. Um, if you can um, nest those relationships, they're extremely important. As much as there's very difficult people that we interact with every day. Um, just try to get that relationship. And as I said, if you do your best and you do you put your best foot forward, it it you are one step there to actually um, getting those relationships working. Um, the one thing, as I said, that is a biggest challenge for myself is not being accepted at first hand um, coming into those outside teams. Um, but as I said, we are lucky enough to be working for such a great company. But outside of Daryl, if you do your, your, your work first and then be good at it, be professional, you're one step into actually making those relationships quite solid. Mm -hmm. And IT is a very small world. So let's get this done because you don't, don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't yeah, normally I work, but yeah, it's just, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I think you do a very good job of it. And those relationships really, because our environment is so small, mm. it makes a huge difference. You know, six degrees of separation is now closer to, I think, three. But um, that's just a guesstimate. Mm. So from the audience, we have an anonymous question. And it is that when we think about people moving into tech, is it more about fear of failure or that the IT space is really cutthroat rather than failing in front of a man. So do you guys think that that is what causes anxiety for women in an environment? Is it fear of failure in general or how hectic the industry is? I'm not sure who wants to take this one. <laughs> um, I think, I think Vita... it can be... Oh, sorry, Ange, go, go for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think Vita touched on it a little where she was saying... Um, after you sort of prove yourself, then you can go into this, um, you guys are cool now. I think it's that initial constant, like every time I join a new team, it's this, I have to prove myself. Um, I have to prove that I am, um, I am worthy, I guess. Um, so there's that sense is that I don't feel like my intelligence is assumed. I think it is, I have to, prove it every single time I meet new people um and then after a while then it'll be like oh okay you're cool here you go you can you can do whatever do you know what I mean I think there's um I think that is the fear I guess that you will this this group of people will not think that you are worthy um or something to that effect um but yeah Mm. That's, yeah, that's such a good point. Lens, do you want to grab the second part? Um, I think Angela has <clears throat> excuse me, mentioned most of the things that are the imposter syndrome. That's one of those things. Um, you feel like you're not worthy, you don't you don't feel like welcomed in that space. 
But again, it's just fear, normal fear from, you know, just natural fear. Um, it's, it's tough. It's a, it is a cutthroat um, kind of space. It, it, sometimes there's very little room to fail or it's perceived like that. Um, so the, the fear to actually be the one that's going to make the biggest boom, no one wants that on their faces. So it, that will turn me off. But I, I don't know. This is the only industry I know, unfortunately. I do not know. Maybe the same thing that we're talking about, it happens in the medical industry. It happens somewhere else. It's just natural that you're going to, to have a problem or not just thinking about them. Am I going to be the one that kills that person for the first time when I do surgery? It happens to everybody. Agreed. I think it is probably a bigger discussion. Imposter syndrome happens literally everywhere. Um, and nobody, like you say, nobody wants to be the person who makes the mistake. So we've got a couple more that's come in. So I think the next one was how can team members help when they see their team leads, architects or analysts or anyone being discriminated against um, without stepping out of line? So what can they do if they see someone discriminating against someone? So it's a big ask. Right. Who wants to grab this one? Linz, you look like you've got it. Um, I'm going to be a little bit biased again because, or, or rather biased to, to the space that we're at. Dario, uh, we've got a lot of support. Um, Alison is one of the most amazing HR uh, he's that I've ever worked with. Um, I've had an encounter with that, but it was outside of work, though it was related to work. And she jumped in and assisted with that without making anything visible in front. Now, let's say you do leave Dario and you find something like that. Um, I believe being an honest person, you, you're an honest person and that's just it. So if something is wrong, um, it's sometimes difficult to actually be the one to speak out about it, but try to find some way or someone to actually make sure that that person is protected and that person is supported. Um, there's mm -hmm. always gonna be somebody. Unfortunately, there's other industries or other spaces that you're gonna go to and you find that that is the culture, the culture of discrimination. It's very difficult then to speak up, speak out. But when you're honest, you're honest, you can speak out. Um, and sometimes it's at the detriment of your own job. Um, I've done that before, I, I ended up losing that job and I didn't care because at the end of the day, that's wrong. You cannot stand around and see people being pushed around. It's yeah. unfortunately like that. Yeah, it's a very, very difficult discussion. I think we're very fortunate, like you said, to have support structures. And there's a confidential discussion that you can have with a lot of the people around you, especially if someone blatantly is acting in a way that we don't condone. So Tabojo has asked... He says he's changed career choices a few times over the years and would like to know what your dream career was growing up. So, Angela, do you want to grab this one? <laughs> uh, I wanted to be, I think it changed a lot throughout the years, but I think if I, I wanted to be an actress um, or a singer. <laughs> yeah, I was very... I liked artsy vibe things. Um, yeah, that was shut down immediately in an African household. Uh, so <laughs> that dream was crushed early on. So yeah, here I am. That was my initial dream. Do you still sing and act on the side? Never. <laughs> no, I probably just sing at home and annoy everyone, but not... Um, nothing like what's the word i'm looking for like serious or proper or whatever so if we ever do a daryl national anthem you are the lady we're speaking to just saying no, <laughs> <laughs> no thanks Kia, what did you want to be i actually wanted to become a script writer or director that's what i wanted to do growing up um in high school i had this teacher who was a theater director and he actually came to the school and showed off one of his productions and i just thought it was so amazing that someone could bring something like this to life so i think that's what i've always wanted to do i always had these ideas that i thought would be great to have them out there in the world so that's what i wanted to be but i'm definitely interested in also 
game design because it's kind of one way of bringing my IT world and my creative aspect into one space. So the cool thing is that it's kind of what you're doing right now, right? You've yeah. got it yeah, and you're creating this thing. Um, there was a really cool article a couple of years ago around this as well. I'll leave that in the chat. Lens, last one on you. What did you want to be? <laughs> Finding the unmute, but unmute button is quite tricky for me. Sorry, guys. Um, first thing that I would like to be right now is just a billionaire without actually working for it. That's, so that's one thing. Um, the second, like, seriously, what I wanted to do is be a doctor. Oh. But now I'm really petrified of everything that involves, like, that was just not smart, eh? Why did you think you could do that when you're petrified of everything that has to do with that? But yeah. Dreams, eh? Dreams. But the billionaire one, we can still push for that. Any yeah. person who wants to donate to my account, I'll send you my <laughs> account. Thanks. I love this. Okay, we'll start a GoFundMe for Lenny to become a billionaire without having to work. Um, so before we wrap up, we have one last question, and it is quite a big one. So it is around, everyone has a different way of handling male chauvinists. How do you handle them? So... I don't know about you guys. I've been very fortunate in that I haven't worked with anyone who blatantly was a male chauvinist. Have you guys had that experience and how do you manage that? So I think fortunately I've dealt with closers. They haven't showed it in front. So I'm like you. I haven't actually personally experienced that. It's just, yeah, I think it's very, very fortunate. I don't know about the other ladies. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, Angela. Um, I don't think I know how to handle them yet. <laughs> um, I sort of shut down. Um, so I, I know like I'm quite a big personality, but I think I tend to just like retreat when I'm just like, I don't actually don't know what to do here. Um, mm -hmm. so I have not found an effective way um of handling that I think I just sort of shut down and I'm like, I hate it here. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable response, you know, just going, <laughs> we'll have Ali come and help us as the moral high ground with a how-to guide at some stage. Kia, have you had something like that? <laughs> I've been fortunate enough not to actually. So I think mm -hmm. that's, a, that's one thing I'm very lucky about, but I think I'd also be with mm -hmm. Angela. I don't think I would know how to, handle the situation like that I think especially being an introvert it's not my I don't go out of my way to be confrontational so I think it's definitely if it ever had to arise it's good to know that I have Alison to call <laughs> our office hero officially and yes <laughs> uh sorry I just wanted to sort of touch on a question that you had earlier um um around sort of the how do you um sort of deal with the discrimination or hand or help out with discrimination um i think um there's little things i think that um, people can do i think you can always sort of speak up or speak on your your female counterparts behalf and what i mean by that is if you if you hear maybe negative things being said about them in, in her absence. You can always just be like, no, I, I know for a fact that she does this or she does that. Um, really be her voice. Cause for me, I, I think I've, I've seen that um, your work doesn't always necessarily speak for itself. And um, because like Vito was mentioning like the cooler box, not cooler box, the, the cooler water. water. cooler. <laughs> <laughs> the, water cooler, um, the water cooler conversations um you're already there um i tapped out because you were talking about dungeons and dragons but you're there so have the, my, my, the conversation on my behalf just say I, I know angela was doing this or angela does this in her um <laughs> cooler box talk is coming soon yeah just you can have my back in that sense or even there's this, there's this thing where I haven't dealt with it personally, but I know some people who have struggled with it where if you're, if you're a woman and you brought up an idea and then it, it's like sort of not listened to um, and a man says the exact same thing and then it's like, oh my gosh, yes, please. Um, 
you can actually say, but Angela said it five minutes ago, or as Angela said, or just to add on to Angela's point, just really make it a point to make sure that um, because you know my skills, translate it to other people who don't necessarily care to get to know me or care to, or that are very clearly like narrow-minded, just I think make it a point. That's sort of how you can be an ally or help out or whatever, yeah. I love that. Lens, how about you? No, I'm just being ridiculous. I think Angela is thirsty. It's Thursday, and there's a Pusa Thursday lurking behind, <laughs> and she's talking about Kuda boxes. You go, girl. I go, grab. I... <laughs> okay. I love that. We're going to get some drinks now, but I think that wraps us up for today. If you guys have more questions, everybody is going to be online, but pop us a message. Also feel free to check out the YouTube channels and leave us questions and comments there. But this was so much fun. It was a great chat. It was really interesting to hear all your thoughts. Thank you for spending the time with us. And I appreciate all of you. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.